Okay. Wow, today is the actual last PCAST. I know. It's crazy. How does it feel to be here filming not so out of breath? Are you less out of breath? Oh, yeah. Nice. That was like immediate as soon as soon as the babe came out. Yeah. The skin cleared slightly and... Yeah, hey, your skin looks great. Thanks. Well, I have foundation on today, yeah. but, you know. Um, but, yeah, and then the breath came back full vigor. Full force. And, like, I don't... I, I pee once in the night, if... If at all. Yeah. Well, I guess for, like, our last filming, I could probably say, hey, Sam. Hey, Alyssa. Are you ready? I'm so ready. <laughs> I was born ready. I think that's what you said on the first, first episode. I think it is, too. Yeah. You said, ugh, I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so for today's episode, today is, as we just said, actually the last episode that we are recording of Approachable Podcast. Yeah. Because Sam is leaving. Yeah. And mm. we are very obviously sad. Yeah. That we're losing Sam. Um, not forever. Not forever. <laughs> <laughs> She's leaving and never coming back in any capacity. So I guess <laughs> say your goodbyes. Yeah. So today is the actual last episode that Sam and I are filming together. But um, this is also the episode where we're announcing that um, Approachable is coming to an end. This yeah. is the last season of Approachable. Um, so we do have a few more episodes for you guys of Approachable after this. But then after a, a rebirth, a rebirth giveth and taketh no yeah take taketh and giveth and giveth back yeah so uh sam obviously has a new baby a new life as well okay yeah so that's the reason it has nothing to do with like any anything else it's like baby time okay (laughs) um we love the podcast we loved working together and stuff like that it's just obviously being a mom takes a a big precedence (laughs) And some time I'm learning as well. I'm yeah. a breastfeeding machine. <laughs> yeah. So, These days. so we're really grateful for all of the support of Approachable um, throughout the years. It's been a really fun 70 plus episodes and seven Which plus seasons. Which is crazy. Seasons. Yeah. I, and, I, and I can't believe it. it's been two years. I know. That's wild. I know. It feels like it flew by in a way. Like when I look back to the videos where we were filming in like the other room. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I know. But... As we said, a rebirth is happening, so I am actually taking over the podcast, and it didn't feel right to me to continue with, (laughs) I'll always, I'll always just have (laughs) shit in my throat. It didn't feel right to me to continue with kind of like the branding that we had. It wouldn't be the same me talking without Sam here. I feel like our candor back and forth is kind of what you know, like birthed approachable. Yeah. So when we were talking about if we were going to keep the podcast going, who was going to take it over sort of thing, which obviously wouldn't be Sam because she's leaving. (laughs) Uh, I think we should dissolve the podcast, but in saying I'm going to take it over, (laughs) I'll do a hundred percent of the work. This seems, I don't know how it's going to, it seems like it will come around somehow. It'll even out in the wash. (laughs) Somehow this will result in me having more time. Um, I took a look at like what I actually wanted to talk about and what I wanted to do. And I realized that true crime was honestly like my my biggest passion. It's what I do in my off time. I literally she does true crime in her off time. (laughs) I'm going to commit the crimes and then talk about them on the podcast. There will be one episode. No, but, you know, all, most of the documentaries that I watch are about true crime. Um, all of the YouTube, basically, that I watch is true crime. And I thought, you know, I think that there's such an opportunity here for me to kind of, like, dig in mm-hmm. to more than just even, like, the murders and, and stuff like that. And a lot of um, true crime is coming out of the States as well, right? And so a lot of people don't focus on Canadian crime either. Yeah. Um, and Which so we have some interesting little tidbits in our history. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some of them I'm a little scared to touch on because like they're out and about. That's fair. That's fair. A lot of them are out and about. Our <laughs> our justice system is loose <laughs> at best. So like, I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to touch on the ones that are recent. But the rebirth of Approachable to... Approached. 
drumroll, approached, dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> will be happening uh, July 7th. So the last episode of Approachable will come out. And then the next week, the first episode of Approached will come out. We also have a teaser of Approached coming for you, um, which is really exciting. I think that's next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, next week. And um, yeah, everything from you know murders to fraudsters to conspiracy like it's gonna be kind of like all-encompassing um true crime and i'm really excited i'm gonna keep doing the youtube version as well so you can still find it on here um and then she's gonna be busting her butt more than ever somehow yeah Yeah. uh and and that's the thing too is like i've been busting my butt i feel like people on instagram are probably so bored with me because i'm always just posting like like, i'm editing editing i'm editing (laughs) yeah but i think that it's gonna be really fun i'm really excited i hope that you guys stick around with me um for the new journey and um yeah just i guess moment of silence for our lost co-host yeah yeah. But I'm excited too. Yeah. I'll have something to listen to while I sit and breastfeed for hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But thankfully, we still have a couple more episodes of Approachable left with Sam. So yeah. she'll go back to being pregnant next week. Soak it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a confusing timeline for people. Yeah. You can have fun figuring that one out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we pre filmed literally as much as we could before Sam gave birth. Yeah. And then it just, it all came so fast (laughs) it was too late yeah Uh, but so for today anyway i'll intro you into this episode segue um sam is going to take us through the whole shebang (sighs) from start to finish i guess i mean it's never going to be finished but (laughs) the birthing september 4th i conceived (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i think it was actually well i found out on september 3rd 13th or 14th, I think. Yeah. But anyways, we're not going to go that far. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Let's go back to, um, you know, like nine months pregnant sort of thing. Yeah, the day. Yeah. Well, okay, I was convinced that the child was going to arrive early. I had like such a feeling about it. And then my due date came and went. Yeah. Very offended. And I was feeling completely fine too. But like the thing was like, I didn't want to go. It, 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 ugh, it just, it sounds so stupid, but it's like just sitting waiting for something that intends to happen is such a weird feeling because like I didn't want to go out and do things and then potentially have my water break or whatever which thank god I wasn't going out and doing things because the way that like my labor progressed was so sudden that (laughs) it would have been so bad like Matt was trying to convince me to like go downtown to like get my hair done not because he wanted me to get my hair done but like because um I was like oh like I you know like I probably won't be able to go see Carl my hairdresser for like a few months and he was like well just go and I was like but what if I like went into labor and he was like well you know like we could someone could come get your car like it'd be fine whatever like it wouldn't be that big of a deal it would have been a big deal (laughs) let's just put it that way because the morning that I went into labor I woke up and I had like really light like period cramps kind of thing um and I had been like bleeding that morning but I had I think I'd been bleeding the night before a little bit too um but like this is the thing that's so frustrating about pregnancy there's like signs that you're going into labor but when you look into it it's like this could happen the day you go into labor or a few weeks before so it's like nothing is actually that definitive other than like your water breaking is like okay yeah like that's probably you're gonna birth a child shortly Mm -hmm. um but that's about it like everything else is like "Eh, could be couldn't be um but I didn't feel anything else like I didn't feel like anything going on so I was like, eh, whatever. It was a Monday. I had my call for Auric, which we always have on Mondays, um, with our the rest of our team down in LA, and sat through the call. All was fine and well. I was sitting and eating lunch, and then I, th- I thought that maybe my water broke or I peed my pants, which happens like a lot in late <laughs> pregnancy, unfortunately. So I was like, either or. And then when I went to the washroom, um, th- this is going to be kind of TMI. There's no way around it. Like, it just is what it is. But, like, when I went to the washroom, um, it was kind of, like, almost, like, greeny yellow. And so I was worried that the water had broke and the baby had pooped inside mm. because that's something they tell you to look out for. Yeah. And then that can also be an issue. Yeah. If they poop inside, then it kind of is, like, let's, yeah. let's get it going. Um, so we called my midwife and, um, the midwife was like, I think you're fine. And at this point, my contractions started happening kind of like suddenly. 
And I was like, ooh, that's a little bit more intense than a period cramp. Um, and while we were on the phone with her, my contractions were getting like closer together. And she was like, I think you're fine, but like, you can call us back if, you know, like start timing your contractions and call us back when you get to this point. And we were like, okay. Sorry, so did your water break? Don't know. Because don't they have to break your water eventually then? I'll get into that. Okay. <laughs> um, so then do you want some? No, I was just trying, like, I didn't want to, like, have my feet, like, on camera, but I also needed to, like, stretch, you Okay, know? okay, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, so I, we called the midwife. She was like, start timing the contractions, but I think you're fine. And then we called the doula and we felt like things were like ramping up really quickly. And sh- she admitted after the fact, she was like, I thought that you guys were maybe confused because she gets dinged when we time our contractions on that app. And she was like, I thought that maybe you guys were confused because the contractions were so close together already that I was like, this seems odd that like 15 minutes have lapsed and like suddenly like now you're having these contractions so close together and like I was texting you beforehand you were like Alyssa had sent me like a video of hers to like just watch over or whatever and I was like yeah no problem and then like 20 minutes later I was like not happening (laughs) yeah and I was like what occurred in the last because she was literally like from my point like and not even me being like she's fine but Sam was like I'm like fine like I just have like period cramps and then it was like 20 minutes later she was like we're going to the hospital (laughs) and I was like what yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah and so we were on the phone with the doula and she was like okay well I mean yeah like call your midwife back and like whatever because like you're at that timing and so we called the wi- midwife back like almost immediately like it was within 15 minutes of when we had last called her and she was like I guess come in um and so we I started having contractions at 1 30 by the time that we had like called all these people and gone back and forth and got into the hospital it was 2 30 Um, And when I got there, I was four centimeters already. Yeah. Which like I thought that because like when you look at like how big four centimeters is on like a ruler, you think that you would kind of feel that happening in your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was having contractions, obviously, but I didn't. I was like, this seems like this should have been happening for so much longer for me to be at four centimeters already. Um, But anyways, and then we got into triage. Well, we had to sit in the late in the waiting room and they ask you all these questions and stuff like that. And it's so weird, like going through contractions because you they just keep asking you questions, <laughs> even though like you can't really like you're having like a little bit of a moment yeah. <laughs> going through your contractions. Um, but I had to like answer whatever questions. And then we went into triage and then my contractions were like ramping up so fast and I was like dying in triage and I just wanted them to like take me to my room so badly um and I could feel that I was just like bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and there was like nothing I could I just had to sit there in the hospital bed and like bleed um and then um in triage they were like they said can we do a COVID test like with the like nose swab and I was like oh it's a choice then no I don't want a nose swab (laughs) while I'm having contractions and then I was like oh, I'd rather not. And then they were like, well, we have to. And I was like, then why did you ask? <laughs> That's what I said during like the middle of my contraction. I was like, why, like, why did you make it seem like this was an option? Like, of course I don't want to fucking swab up my nose right this second. Um, and anyways, and then they did my COVID test and then we, I walked to my Sorry, room. I'm choke. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Sorry. I inhaled that. It's okay. Sorry. Okay. They did the COVID test. It was negative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't know that actually. Oh Yeah. So they just did it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like, I thought that we would have to wait for like the immediate results before they would even bring me to the room. But I was in the room and they were like, yeah, we're still waiting. Oh, weird. And I was like, what the hell? but it was a private room anyways. But so anyway, we, I walked to the hotel room. To, it, the wasn't hotel a, room. it wasn't a hotel. It was a hospital. <laughs> I walked to the hospital room. It could have been anything at that time. Who fucking knows, honestly. Um, and like, even that was such a weird It's just, like, so far from what you expect, I guess. Like, you can't really imagine, like, what it would actually be like. But, like, it seems, like, almost inhumane (laughs) to make a woman that's having contractions or a person that's having contractions walk (laughs) from triage to their hospital room. Well, but, like, I always assumed that you would be in a wheelchair. I know. I thought so, too. Well, can't you choose to? Like, no one gave me the option. I literally would have been like, uh, no. Can I have a chariot? <laughs> yeah, like put me, sit my ass in a fucking wheelchair and wheel me up there. It was it was particularly odd to me because like at this point I was just wearing the hospital gown and I was bleeding. 
which like obviously like it's a hospital so like you know like yeah. that it's not like blood is like a never before seen thing but but like i was bleeding all over the floor walking to my hospital room you were yeah i i mean i was just they call it show and it's just like because like your cervix is um dilating it it, it like breaks blood vessels and it causes you to bleed yeah this doesn't sound not that sounds fine yeah yeah yeah. yeah. this doesn't sound normal to me the situation I don't think that they should have let you walk there was a few things that were kind of odd to me which like and I and I I want to like preface this with saying the staff that was there was like so great like they were super nice they were like really really calm they were like great but there was a few things that were kind of weird and that was something that I was like I just didn't expect to walk to my room I don't know if that sounds like a bratty thing but like it was just it was just odd it was just odd to me that they'd be like free bleed while you walk to your room okay we'll clean up behind you yeah I don't think that that sounds bratty that just seems like um inconvenient for everyone involved like yeah. having to mop up biological waste behind you do you yeah know? <laughs> it was odd so anyways got to the ho- the hospital bed and um I just was like dying at this point I was laying down and my doula was like um which a lot of people don't know the difference between a doula and a midwife. So if you have a midwife, then that would be the person who would deliver your child instead of a doctor, unless you had to get a C-section. And the doula also can't do the epidural. So, or sorry, the midwife also can't do the epidural. Um, so you have your midwife. And then I also had a doula, which is like more of a support person. So they advocate for you. And then they also um, do like exercises with you and stuff like that to help through labor. So where was your doula when you were walking? <laughs> she was she was there. Bleeding. Yeah, yeah, she was there. She didn't advocate for a wheelchair. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, no. She, uh, she met us at the hospital. So we met up with her in triage, like right before we were about to go to the hospital room. Um, so then we go into the hospital room. I was laying in the bed. Um, and she, my doula was like, do you want to get up and go in the shower? And I was like, no. And she was like, I think maybe we should. Because, like, I think she could tell that, like, it was, like, getting worse kind of thing. So she was like, let's, like, try some things to, like, intervene and, you know, help a little bit. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't want to – I wasn't planning to take um, any kind of, like, medication or anything like that. Um, Just because, like, I – don't typically have I, I, I it just makes me anxious like it, that's literally like the best way to describe it it makes me anxious like even when they were describing like what the feeling of laughing gas is like or what the feeling of the epidural is like I was like oh god like this makes me so anxious and so it, it wasn't like I was dead set that I was absolutely gonna have a natural birth or that that was even super important to me um it's just more so that I was like I'd rather not if I don't have to mm-hmm um and at first like when my contractions were first starting and they were further apart I was like no problem Mm -hmm. like literally a million times I could do this it absolutely no problem it was it was (laughs) when it reached a point of like my contractions were like two minutes long and 30 seconds apart and we were only four hours in and at that point I was already seven centimeters and I was like okay so sorry when would we do the epidural? <laughs> um, and so we had we had gotten to the shower and Matt was like showering my back. I was like just like butt naked sitting on this chair in the shower being like, please kill me. Were you like bent over? How were you sitting? It wasn't pretty. I was sitting like this approximately. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. <laughs> yeah. Aww. But like you just don't even give a shit. Like no. so many people say that. And and obviously, like, it it will never register with you until you're in that moment. But, like, so many people are like, you will not give a fuck whether or not you shit while you have your baby. You won't care if there's, like, a million students in there while you're, like, ass naked. Like, you won't care who sees your vagina. And I was like, I think I will. Absolutely the fuck not. I was, like, stripping off my shit, like, sitting. I sat like this in the shower. <laughs> she has her elbows on her knees and she's bent forward. I <laughs> hunched over um, with my legs spread apart on this, like, shitty plastic chair in the shower. Um, <laughs> was the shower, like, one of those, like, big sort of, um, kind of like a YMCA shower, but like a single? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like a walk-in kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have to, like, step over a bath. Yeah. Can you fucking imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Matt was like, he would shower my back between contractions, and then during the contraction, the doula would take it, and she would shower, like, my belly. Huh. So with, like, super hot water. Um, and it was ni- it was nice for, like, a second. And then one of the nurses came in, and she was like, do you want to try and poop? 
I don't know why. I don't know why she thought that was like, I, I don't know if that's like a thing that they're like, they try to get you to go before they're like, yeah, I don't know. But she was like, do you want to try and poop? And I was like, I do want to try and poop. Yeah, <laughs> you Let's, did. Yeah. And so then um, everyone was kind of like congregated in the shower causeway. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like standing there like naked and I was like by the toilet and I was like, can you get out? Am I going to, are you guys going to stay here while I poop? Like what am I, so I like kept like hesitating to like sit down or not because like they were just chit chatting in like the shower area. Um, And then finally everyone evacuated and I was like, okay, great. Going to go try and poop, took a poop. um, And then successfully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was fine. The last Um, good poop. It was the last good poop. (laughs) It was quite some time before I pooped again. Um, And then I waddled back to my hospital bed. And then we were trying to get into all these different positions. Like, um, I was, like, in child's pose for a little bit uh, to the best of my ability. And that was helping a little. Um, Matt had, like, this little fan that he was just, like, blowing on my face during contractions. It was awesome. Where were you in child's pose? On the bed or on the floor? On the hospital bed. Okay. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah, we tried a bunch of different like little positions to see what's what was what. And then um oh, this was like the best ever. Like my do between like during contraction, sorry, my doula would like press on my hips and it was the just like the relief of the sentry. I can't even describe. It seems like such a stupid like small thing and it was just like oh my god, serenity. Like it was the weirdest thing. She would press on them how? Like like this. Like she would literally just like squeeze them together. Yeah, basically. So she would take like, so for anyone that's like listening, she would have like her palms like flat against my hips and she would just like push in. How hard? I mean, I think fairly hard, but like I was like having a contraction. So who fucking knows what was happening? It was like, can I do it to you right now? Can you tell me? Well, I need to, this is a scientific experiment. (laughs) I need to know how. (laughs) Let me, this is how you were? That's tough. (laughs) I'll take that out where your butt's like elevated. (laughs) But... (laughs) It was awesome. That's like, that was like a lot of effort I was putting in. Yeah. Sorry, let me check my text from out here. Yeah, so she would press on my hips. That helped so much. Um, And even just like, like, it's just weird. Like before you take any kind of like medication, it's like all these little small things were so helpful to me. Like even just like Matt, like touching my head or something like that was like so like soothing for some reason. Uh, So you want it to be touched. Yeah, oddly, which I'm not. Yeah, that's surprising to me. I don't normally like people to touch me. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, it was, I, I think just because like you're so in your head while it's happening because it's so intense and like contractions are so bizarre because during the contraction, it's like all consuming, like so overwhelming. And then the second it's done, you're perfectly fine. Hmm. Like don't there's no like for, at least for me there was no like residual pain like I was completely fine like could talk normally like whatever and then like the second it comes back on it's just like so intense um so it was like all those little things made such a huge difference they allowed me to drink water actually which was really nice too because like nothing like some icy fucking water while you're going through that I'll yeah tell you. it was awesome um and then um yeah we were trying all these different little things and then at some point I was like okay give me the gas. And then I clutched that thing until my fucking death. Like I, it it was, it it helped in such a, I can't even describe the way it helps because it's almost like it does like nothing. (laughs) But again, it's like, it's like something almost more to distract you. Right. So it kind of like takes the edge off. Um, but my contractions were getting so close together that like I wasn't having enough time in between to like actually be breathing. So I was getting so dizzy and lightheaded mm. and feeling really sick. And then that was not working out for me. So anyways, then I was like, okay, let's fucking talk about this epidural. Um, th- the amount of time it took for that anesthesiologist to get there, I cannot even describe. It <laughs> felt like forever. And I was like, Matt, was that that long? And he was like, no, it, it actually, like from the time I asked for it to like, getting it was like at least 20 minutes which seems like it wouldn't be that long it's fucking long when you're like going through that with your body um and then putting it in took about 20 minutes yeah I've I've heard that that's how long it takes yeah which is I mean (laughs) they're not fucking messing around back there like that's an intense little procedure they're doing and I I can't even imagine that being your job like that would be so fucking stressful 
Um, and Matt was telling me after the fact, because I remembered signing a paper and Matt was telling me after the fact that he was like, yeah, like I was getting really scared because they were telling you that like, you know, like you could be paralyzed and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, really? Yeah. I'm like, I don't even remember this. Like, I don't even remember them saying that. And then the other day I was at a midwife appointment and I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And she was like, oh, I admitted you. She she was the midwife who like I, I first met in triage apparently and like was in my room for like half the day and I didn't even fucking know. Yeah, because you were so out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do not remember them at all telling me I was paralyzed. So thank God nothing happened. You were paralyzed? I, no, it's telling me I could I could be paralyzed. So thank God nothing happened because I would have been like, why didn't you warn me? And then they're like, well, as per you signed a fucking contract. Um, yeah. But I was saying to Matt, I'm like, it's kind of odd to me that they don't get you to sign all this stuff at the beginning, mm. just in case, you know what I mean? And then, like, if you don't end up getting the epidural, they just, like, shred it or whatever. Like, it, it, that's kind of odd to me because it's like, I would have rather signed that stuff and known the risks while I was, like, somewhat coherent rather than, like, I'm at the point where I'm, like, asking for an epidural and it's for a fucking reason, you know? But I feel like your midwives should have told you the risks but I know the risks. I knew that that was a thing just from yeah. life. I don't know. Um, well, I think because because I had said, like, they had talked to me a little bit about it and, like, what it would be like and stuff. But I had been pretty adamant that I wasn't planning to get one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why. But, yeah, because it's, it's, like, literally right into your fucking mind. Yeah, it's right in so, there. Oh, it's, yeah. it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, and that's the thing, too, is, like, there truly are like risks with every procedure. Exactly. Like with my tonsillectomy, they're like, yeah, I mean, you could you could die, but yeah. it's like the <laughs> the chances on a tonsillectomy. Can you imagine? Oh god. Oh my god. That's well, what's on your grave. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean. Like the chances are just so 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 slim, especially like the amount that they. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So you know everything like with a grain of salt, but yeah, for sure, I think that there's a certain time where you're like in so much duress <laughs> that yeah that it's like you, nothing's processing you shouldn't really be competent to sign sign your rights dude yeah but then that begs the question who is competent to sign is it your husband making medical decisions for you at that point or wife uh, i'm i'm gonna wait to say what i'm thinking right okay. now um but yeah so okay so Lady came in to do my epidural, signed my life away. Um, Matt almost passed out. They told him he had to sit down because <laughs> he was like just like ill watching it, which I, I I would never fucking watch that shit. I just would never. Like, mm-hmm. that's just so not like what I'm about, man. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know. Like, just do it <laughs> and we'll talk about it later. Um, but he had to sit down. He said that was the worst part. Oh, like e- even during like the like actual labor he said it wasn't as bad as the epidural was. Um, but it's it's hard, too, because, like, you have to get into kind of, like, a like you have to be kind of, like, hunched over with, like, your back sort of, like, curved out towards them. And, like, that's such an awkward position to be in. It's such an uncomfortable position to be in when you're not only nine months pregnant, but also, like, going through contractions. And so she'd be like, you need to sit still. But I was, like, going through contractions. I was, like, dying. And I was, like, trying to pull the gas mask towards me. Um, so finally they got it in. Um, and I was still having to take the gas through my contractions and they were like, um, okay. Like we think like, it's not like working and they were doing like this ice test. Like they put ice like on your legs and then like moving up your body kind of thing to see like how cold it is to you, um, to determine like how effective the epidural is. Um, so they had to like increase, like you could feel the ice. Oh yeah. I could, I could still feel the contractions as if they hadn't put in an epidural. Oh, crazy. Um, and so they had to increase it, I think, twice mm-hmm. before I got to a point where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, now I'm feeling fine. Um, but this was the thing that was kind of interesting for me because I've heard a lot of people explain epidurals as like they get the epidural put in and then like immediately like their legs go numb and then like nurses have to put their legs back in the bed for them. I could move my legs the whole time. Weird. Yeah, like I could like um, like I could like put my feet up and like push myself up in the bed the whole time. Um, I ended up going back into like child's pose and stuff like that I could like get myself over into child's pose myself um so that was kind of odd because like and I'm glad that it was like that because I that was part of what freaked me out is that I was like I don't like the idea of like not being able to move my legs at all yeah um so yeah but I by the time I was like pushing 
I couldn't feel shit, man. Like they were like, they were like, you're like the baby's head is right there. Do you want to touch it? And I was like, first of all, absolutely the fuck not. Secondly, are what? <laughs> like I couldn't believe that I couldn't like, I could feel a lot of pressure like in my butt. And like, that's kind of what contractions felt like at that point. But like, I couldn't feel I, yeah I don't know yeah which is the only thing that like I could see being really special about having like a natural birth quote unquote um because unmedicated like, you, we could say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um because like my mom had two unmedicated births and she said like the like it was just the coolest feeling like feeling the baby come out and I didn't really f- feel yeah. much like it didn't yeah it was just more so like really intense but so anyways got the epidural put in um they topped it up a couple times and then um i was just chit chatting with the nurse at that point (laughs) Um, yeah i remember um during the day like matt was kind enough to send me updates (laughs) It took a long time for an update to come through and I was like pissing my pants because I was like, <laughs> what happened? Like, because I got no warning. It was just like, we're going to the hospital and then fucking radio silence. And I was like, I know it's not about me, but my paranoia is like so high yeah. that I was like, something's wrong. <laughs> I think I told him at some point, I was like, text Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> I got the first one and I was like a wave of relief. Like I had gotten home and just started cleaning. Like I cleaned my entire space and then it was clean. Like incessantly. Like. Yes. And then so I was like, there's nothing left to clean down here. So I came upstairs and I started like putting away their dishes. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. And then I finally got the message. But um, I, I only got messages from Matt and it was like, you know, she's such a trooper. She's like, but she's in a lot of pain and blah, blah. And then at like, I think it was like seven o'clock or something. I got a text from you and you were like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, after the epidural, it was like 180. Oh my God. It was, it, it's crazy because like, it literally feels like that, like, like I almost picture it as if like that was the beginning of my hospital stay because, it, and then like the part where I was in triage and like all the time before the epidural, like it's as if like that's out of place kind of thing it's so weird but yeah it was like answering work emails I was responding to like the work like group chats and stuff like that and they were like what the fuck is wrong with you but it's like once you get the epidural you're fucking chilling like it's yeah. it's great it works great um so in, in the event that it doesn't paralyze you um which is so slim <laughs> yeah <coughs> not medical advice but like look up yeah look up the rates for yourself I'm yeah. sure it's nothing but like they have to they have to put that shit in there. I wasn't aware what I was signing up for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Um, then I was just chit chatting with the nurse. We were having a great old time and um, complimented her eyebrows. I remember that. Um, and then how on brand of you? <laughs> yeah, there was a few people there that had really nice eyebrows. Like they looked like they had just gotten them shaped. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, Finally, they brought in the other midwife because I think I was like right between like people switching off shifts. Um, So they brought in the other midwife that actually delivered. um, And she was like, oh, yeah, you're ready to push. I was dilated 10 plus two at that point. So I probably could have pushed earlier. And this was at 1030 at night. So we got to the hospital at 230 at 1030 at night. They were like, well, had the baby at 1027 rather. So it was probably at like 10 Mm -hmm. um, because it was four contractions I pushed through and then baby was here. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You pushed for such a short amount of time. It feels. Yeah. It was, I mean, your labor in general in, I mean, I'm sure that it felt so long, but like, I mean, my mom was in labor with my brother for like 36 hours or some shit. Like Christy. I know. I know. (laughs) Like, well, and that's, that's what I was honestly thinking about. Like when I was thinking about asking for the epidural, I, I was like in the middle of a contraction and like, throughout every contraction I was just like oh my god like please get out please get out please get out that was like all that I could think um and then I just had this like thought of Christy and I was just like man like I just don't if if I if someone told me in that moment you're gonna have your baby in an hour I'd be like that's fine totally fine then let's just do it whatever kind of thing but I was like there's no way of knowing because like your labor can stall suddenly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and you know like it just things happen right um and I was just like I had that thought of Christine. I was like, man, fuck this shit. Like if yeah. I, if I'm going to be here for another 40 hours, like no, like I'm not, I'm not going to like put myself through that because I just think like it, it is like a really intense and like overwhelming thing. But like 
you don't have to go through it to that extent, you know? Yeah. So like there's options and mm-hmm. and so many people I, I like that they say like there's no um trophy for like pain yeah you know what I mean and it's like if there is something that's important to you and like you you know don't believe in medication for some reason whatever I think I mean it's obviously your experience yeah. um and whatever is important to you but it's so true like n- <laughs> throughout your life nobody's going to be like wow congratulations well, you did it without <laughs> yeah like, and like cares? <laughs> I, I, I think like the thing is it's like I, I can understand the reasons for wanting to do an unmedicated birth and I think when like the baby came out, that's when I was like the most disappointed because I was like, oh yeah, like I I do wish like in a way that I could have like um, had, I could have known like how long my labor was going to last and like kind of determined whether or not I could have done it without because like I would have liked to like feel that more. Um, But at the same time, it's also kind of like, you know, it's such an intense experience regardless that it's like would, would, that moment have been special enough to kind of offset like the potential trauma of like going through that and like it's just it's a really intense experience and something that like you can't you're like on another fucking planet like it's it's just such a weird thing um but um yeah I did did my pushing that was like the thing that was the worst about that is like they want you to push as much as you can during the contraction obviously um and so like you they tell you not to like breathe during like while you push like take like a a breath in and then like push and then they want you to like be like and then like do it again like not take like a deep breath but like just like push like harder and harder and harder kind of thing and I was like I just want to breathe so badly (laughs) and Matt was like I was trying to like not breathe for as long as you were and he was like I was gonna like pass out (laughs) Uh, but like it, it was like there was just so many people like screaming at me not like in a bad way but like being like come on like you can do this like push like like it's right there it's right there and like which Alyssa knows this is like my <laughs> fucking nightmare like, it was it was fine in that moment but like I hate workout classes for that reason like anybody trying to high five me anybody trying to be like yeah get it like you can do this like push yourself to the limit like fuck off like I hate that shit so much you're gonna love it Uh, yeah I I was gonna say that's my friggin element yeah (laughs) you're gonna be like yeah I got this yeah yeah no that is not a motivator for me I'm gonna be like in there with my second child and like tracking my records from the first one like okay how quickly can I push this (laughs) yeah oh man yeah oh um yeah and then um baby came out um they did in fact poop oh yeah with the water breaking thing so someone checked me and they said that they thought my water was intact and then someone checked me right after and they were like no no your water broke and then the other person the first person who had checked me checked me again like a little while later and she and she was like oh yeah your water's broken it's not we don't know I don't know whether or not my water broke at home I don't know whether it broke at the hospital but it wasn't like a big thing no you like really don't know maybe it was when you peed your pants didn't your pants and that's that's what I that's what I think but who knows was it on the chair no it was because I stood up You stood up and it broke. I think so. Yeah. Was it on the floor or was it just like, no, I was wearing, I was wearing a pad though. Oh, I see. Yeah. Cause I had been bleeding. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how interesting, which thank God I got pads too, because I was like, eh, do I need them? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. I fucking (laughs) needed them. Um, yeah. So bird, the child, they did poop. Um, and then they put them on my chest. Um, And I just cried and I was like just crying and crying and like all I could think was that like I wanted to say like thank you to everyone but I couldn't like bring myself to like say because I was just like so overwhelmed. Um, And then Matt cut the cord which he wasn't sure if he was going to do or not but he did. Um, And then my midwife was like oh yeah they did give me an episiotomy. Um, So then she was like we're going to stitch you up and I was like okay that sucks <laughs> because like in the moment she was like we're gonna do a little episiotomy if that's okay because you're just tearing so we don't want it to like turn into like a thing so we're gonna like whatever and I was like yeah sure because I was fucked and then um after the fact I was like oh damn it because <laughs> I really didn't want to have to get an episiotomy but obviously when it's necessary it's necessary yeah. um so yeah I tore in two places one on the outside one on the inside and then they did the episiotomy so I had stitches in three different places um and it was uncomfortable this is what i will say if you're scared of labor it ain't a thing it's fine 
I feel like it's not it sucks but like if you are planning to get an epidural anyways like it's you're gonna be completely fucking fine um postpartum is a, a thing of nightmares yeah and it's it's odd to me that like people don't talk more about that pain wise because I mean I don't know if like I'm wildly uncommon in like how many stitches I had to get but like it was just so oh my god it was so uncomfortable I was so swollen um and in just just in so much pain um and then also like with breastfeeding because I I did want to breastfeed so they want you to kind of breastfeed as quickly as you can like as soon as you can after the baby comes out um and my arms hurt so bad for some reason I'm not really sure why you may have been like tensing like crazy yeah well and I think like I had the IV in one they took blood out of the other and like I think there was just like a lot I don't know um but my arms hurt really bad so like holding the baby really hurt and then they wanted me to like sit upright which I was like I am so swollen like I have like all these stitches like in my fucking vagina and like I can't like sit up properly Mm -hmm. it was just so uncomfortable um and unpleasant and then um yeah we were in the hospital until um the next we stayed for 24 hours Mm -hmm. um and then they were like you guys can stay as long as you want or you can bounce it was the longest 24 hours of my life yeah and matt was like let's fucking bounce because he yeah they gave him like this they call it like a dad bed it's a chair (laughs) (laughs) it's like a chair that reclines and like he was like it was the most like uncomfortable which like obviously like he he understands i'm exponentially more uncomfortable than him but like it's just it sucks like being in the hospital and like especially as like the kind of like caretaker the person in the caretaker position time goes by slow in the hospital man yeah (laughs) it's 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 not like an easy thing to be there as like the the side person kind of thing or the support person rather (laughs) side Um, chick (laughs) yeah (laughs) um yeah so we stayed for 24 hours and then we did all the tests that we needed to do for baby and everything was all good to go and then we fucking left you were happy to come home too though right like you didn't want to stay or did you want to stay I didn't want to stay necessarily but like I I think I was a little bit scared to go home just because like I knew how many stitches I had and I was kind of scared like what if I try to go to the bathroom and like I rip one or you know like I sit up in bed weird because like even just like rolling over in bed was so painful that I was like kind of scared to go home for that reason. Um, This was the other thing that I was going to say was kind of weird in the hospital too. So as I mentioned baby pooped inside um so they came out covered in poop (laughs) yeah they like just let they have like these straps that they put across your belly um that keep like heart rate monitors on so they can monitor like the baby's heart rate throughout the whole labor um those were like covered in shit my hospital gown was covered in shit the and like blood and like all this grossness and like the the sheets were the gown was the straps were like everything was like covered in like grossness nobody like cleaned me up I cleaned myself I I when I when my legs could finally when I could walk after the epidural I like went to the bathroom and like I took a wet wipe and I like wiped myself clean and stuff like that and I was like pulling those like straps out of the bed and I was like can I can we throw these out somewhere like that was so odd to me too because I was like why would you leave me in this <laughs> filth yeah like I was like oh god did like, nobody like offer to change your sheets or like give you a new ho- hospital gown they did w- when I could get up to go to the washroom to like start cleaning myself up that's when they changed my sheets but that was the next day that was after breakfast the next day oh, wow. so I slept in it like the whole night and then through the morning and yeah. then whatever. I wonder if it's because it's like moving, like moving you is worse, is worse than just like, yeah. okay, just sleep in it for the night sort of thing. Cause like, yeah. if you actually can't move, they would have to like hoist you up in those, in those like things that they use for people who can't like obviously move. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was so weird. Also when they, when they pulled the baby, this is such a weird thing and this is kind of gross. I'm sorry for like anyone, but like, when they pulled the baby out and put them on my chest, the the like one of the first things in my mind too was like, I could never eat meat again because the smell of blood like so close to my face. I was like, oh my God. Like it just like brought me back to like <sighs> eating steak for some reason. I was like, oh my God. Like that was just like something that like went through my mind really quickly. And then when they were doing the stitches, 
Oh my god, this makes my blood boil. Um, someone not that long ago, like this was within the past like year or two, someone told me about like the husband stitch. Uh, you just found out about that? I didn't know about that. Like I didn't know that was like a thing until like kind of more like recent years. Yeah. Um, but for those of you that don't know, this was like apparently like a thing back in the day kind of thing where they would like ask the husband of the wife after they gave birth if they wanted them to do a husband stitch. So they would do like an extra stitch to their vagina to make them like potentially tighter for their husband the thought of that makes me so fucking irate i can't even describe it it makes me fucking ill like i could literally go into a murderous rage right the second just like thinking about it and like in that moment when they were like stitching me i was like i cannot fucking imagine the balls <laughs> on whomever would fucking agree to that after watching their wife go through that yeah fuck out of here i would oh my god i would rip your eyelids off like i can't even imagine oh it just made me irate but so. also for me like <clears throat> would that stitch be on the outside because like where's yeah where's the thought process there too it's do you know what i mean wherever it's going what the fuck is wrong with you well, obviously god damn it. obviously what's wrong with you regardless yeah. but it's like Oh huh? man, oh man, it makes me so mad. Ugh. Oh my god. Anyway, okay, so let's take it back to when you said I'm gonna wait to say what's in my head about the epidural signage. Um what was I going to say? I think it might have been something about the husband stitch thing. Oh. Uh, to be honest. Because I said who do they ask the husband? The oh yeah, wife? yeah, 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 yeah. That's it why. was the husband yeah. stitch thing. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And then that was it. Yeah. And then we went home. We met you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got to hold baby the very first, like, second, basically, that they were in the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How um, was that for you? How, um, how was this from your perspective? <laughs> <laughs> well, from the beginning, it was just, like, I was very, like, shocked. Mm-hmm. And Same. <laughs> because it just, like, happened so quickly. Like, you texted me in the morning, and you were like, I think today might be the day. Like, I'm having some cramping. I'll let you know. I was upstairs working all day and i was like so annoyed with this video i was like can you please just watch it back i can't watch it again um because i'd been editing it and editing it and re-editing it and she was like yeah no problem and um then she texted me like 20 minutes later and was like when do you need this video by and i was like oh like hopefully by tomorrow or something or like when do you want this uploaded and i was like hopefully by tomorrow and you were like i don't think (laughs) <laughs> I don't think that this is going to happen. Like things are like happening down here. And I was like, oh, OK, no problem. I was like, literally no problem. <laughs> and then I went to the bathroom. And then when I got out, I was like, can I come and see you? And then she texted me and I heard the garage door opening. And all she said was like, going to hospital. <laughs> and I was like, OK. And I was like, wow, that happened uh. fast. And she just double clicked and then put the like <laughs> thing. She didn't even message me back. It was just like the like. And I was like, oh, shit's going down. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't even get a text a text back. Like, shit must be fucking popping off in that car. <laughs> that was like, that was the worst drive of my life. <laughs> oh, were you just like in so much pain? Well, I was in pain, but he also was like wanting to try and like time the contractions kind of thing. So he was like putting on like, like the, he has a Tesla and has like auto drive, which like anyways, he shouldn't have like been timing contractions on his thing but like he was like trying to like press the start button on the contraction thing he was like freaking out yeah I because upstairs where I was working I can look out the window and see people leaving or coming to the house and I like was waving out the window and I just saw like Matt with both hands on the steering wheel like staring straight ahead (laughs) and Sam was like reclined I'm pretty sure oh yeah yeah like almost laying down in the Tesla and I was like (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) this shit's going down um but yeah I mean the whole day was like very it was really hard for me. Um, no. It is, man. Like, honestly, like, it, it makes me so... In a way, like, I, I hate when people post that they're going into labor on social media because I fucking panic. No matter who they are, even if I don't know them, yeah. it, I panic all day long because, like, with Christy, I mean, goddamn, 40 fucking hours? And I was, like, waiting and waiting. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. Oh, my well, God. Well, and that's how I felt because, like, I, I really didn't get a... A text until I got home from the gym because I had to keep myself busy basically mm-hmm. so I was just working and then um I only told my mom <laughs> that you were in labor <laughs> because I knew that like that was like an approved person basically um and so I basically was just like sh- like 
straight texting my mom for like eight hours. <laughs> this is like the only person I could talk to. And no was, update yet. No update yet. No update yeah. yet. <laughs> She's like, I got it, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I was working, texting my mom, and then I went to the gym for like a couple hours. And then I got home from the gym and I had offered to like feed the dogs or whatever because mm-hmm. I was like oh yeah like we never talked about who was dealing with the dogs <laughs> and so I was like going to get the food and this is like not important but you guys changed like dog brands yeah. and so I, <laughs> I didn't know where it was number one because I looked in the freezer and then I was like that's not in there so then I looked in like the deep freeze and they were in there but then I'm like how much how much do I give them now I'm like I don't know I haven't <laughs> taken care of the dogs since they changed brands and so I was like can I get some instructions on this food, please? <laughs> so I was trying to figure it out without having to text Matt because it's like the thing that I dislike almost the most out of anything is like when you're in a stressful situation and people just can't problem solve like the most minute details themselves. It's like, do you really need to fucking text me about like how to lock your door properly? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, grow up. <laughs> so I'm like trying to figure this out. I'm like calling your mom. I'm like, how much food do they get? Um, I'm sure that Arrow got like a feast. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I fed her a little too much. Um, That's okay. But I fed her a quarter and then Kuma the rest. Um, and I, that's when I, I got the text from Matt that was like, uh, she's a trooper, but she's like, you know, a lot of pain sort of thing. And I was like, okay, and how are you? Like, just check on Todd. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, fine. It's just hard to see her in this much pain. But then like, even though like knowing you were like having a really hard time, I still felt better because I'm like, if mm-hmm. she's having a hard time, like... I mean, she's alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And I'm like, okay, he, if things were like going wrong with baby, he probably would have said that in the text or like, yeah. you know what I mean? So at least I knew like, yes, it's a hard time, but like you're safe, baby's safe, you know, things are going okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I just started cleaning like obsessively. Um, and then I got another text I guess like, yeah, it would have been like seven o'clock and you were like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you were like, it's fine. Fucking fucking fuck a labor without an epidural. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, OK, noted. <laughs> like, yeah, you're just chilling. Um, and then, yeah, the next 24 hours were like so long because like for some reason I I knew that you were going to have to stay there. But for some reason, I felt like after you had baby, like I would be able to see it. Yeah. Just like right away. Um, and I ended up sleeping with the dogs that night and I got zero sleep. Like I would say like three or four hours. Like, the dogs were, like, missing you, and then I was, like, excited. So it was just, like, I feel like that that day didn't even exist. And then, um, yeah, it was just so long, like, waiting for you guys to come home. And then when you came home, I was, like, I didn't know if you wanted to go, like, straight to bed sort of thing or, like, what was going on. But then you were, like, you can still see baby, like, when we get home. And I was, like, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I um, – you also asked me if I could come upstairs to, like uh, – keep the dogs like at bay basically and so I got to be there like right when you guys walked in yeah and that was really special and I got to see baby and like oh my goodness it was like so overwhelming (laughs) oh I was just like like beside myself but I was trying not to like react because I didn't want the dogs to like freak out yeah yeah (laughs) so I was trying to like keep it really like um measured (laughs) yeah (laughs) and uh you were so like I've never even seen you like this before. You were so like, like not solemn, but like solemn, but happy. Do you know what I mean? Like you were just walking so slow and then like your laughs would be like, (laughs) oh my God, dude, like laughing hurts so badly. (laughs) Coughing hurts so badly. Like, oh yeah. But you seemed like very peaceful, weirdly. Yeah. Peacefully in pain. Yeah. But just so calm. It was so, it was so wild to see. It was, this was something that I was kind of nervous about because like I said to Christy that I was like, when I watched your birth video, I was like, you were so naturally like a mom, like immediately, like she took her son onto like her chest and she was like, it's okay, baby. Like, don't worry. Like she just seemed like so suddenly a mom. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm really worried. Like, I don't think I'll feel like that, like, um, natural I guess like I like I thought that it would like take me a lot longer to like settle into this role of like okay I'm caring for this human now and like I'm the mom and mm-hmm. whatever but it's it was so sudden yeah like it, it just it immediately felt like okay yeah like this is my child to care for and like that's totally fine and yeah I, like I thought I would feel a lot more like I was babysitting kind of thing yeah no it seems like very one it's weird because people would ask me like obviously like people who knew and like whatever would ask me how you were doing and I'd be like oh, she's so calm I'm like I couldn't <laughs> believe it like you because I, I I didn't ex- 
disrespect anything, but like just from knowing moms and like knowing the hecticness and like whatever, it just didn't feel that way in the house. Like it fe- always mm-hmm. felt like very calm. And so I was like, it's just like, it's like eerie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything's going fine sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Sam uh, had gone upstairs and Matt was like, oh, do you want to take baby up to Sam? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> You're going to let me walk with the baby? You're gonna hold the fuck? All right, yeah, sorry. it was wild because baby was in like a, a carrier. Yeah, yeah. And so Matt was like, you can just take baby up to upstairs. And I was like holding the carrier like so, so gingerly. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I didn't realize you guys would be okay with me like handling the baby so quickly. Like it's a day old. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I did like wash my hands in preparation and stuff like that just in case. In preparation. <laughs> Well, I like I, you know, I like read up on how you yeah, have to like yeah. handle newborns. Um, so I did, and then I just I put the car seat like down on the floor in their bedroom because I was like I don't I just put put the baby here. Um, and Sam was like getting herself together and whatever, and Matt comes upstairs and like looks at the car seat and he's like, "Well, you can pick the baby up," and I was like. I don't know how. <laughs> and so Matt goes and like, like puts his arm under the baby and like shows me how to how to <laughs> hold a newborn. And it's like you just do it like this, and then pass the baby to me. And so then I was just holding baby, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. It is like you're so scared to like do it. Like you just like almost like don't want to like breathe on them because you're yeah. like I don't want to like break this child. Yeah. Well, and that's how it felt and. And baby is just, like, so chill. Like, I know that they've been fussy, like, recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I couldn't believe it. Like, there was no, like, screaming and crying. Like, a little bit fussy when, when they first came home, yeah. for sure. Um, and then I realized really quickly, I, I just feel like maybe I'm born to be an aunt. I don't know. But I realized that, like, if I do, like, squats, yeah, the baby, like, chills. Love it. It's just wild. Like they were crying and then I did it and I was like maybe this is like a one-time thing and then I did it a second time and it worked and then I did it like just yesterday and I'm like why do you like this and now you're committed I'm committed day, every day uh, because, uh. <laughs> because I'm like I think I saw it first on friends when like Monica's holding the baby and she's like whoa baby 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 whoa I don't never watch friends. anyway <laughs> anybody who watched friends knows that episode for sure um and then I saw it on TikTok as well recently that like babies like that for some reason. And so I just tried it and it worked. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, because like when Set there's yourself up for disaster. Yeah. Well, when there's like a baby looking up at you and they're like doing that face when they're like about to cry, you're like, I don't want you to be sad. Yeah. And so now my legs are like, like my quads are going to be fucking look at this lump. Steel. <laughs> Steel. From your child no I'm just kidding it's like really not that bad um but that made me feel really good because when baby was crying and I was like what if I don't know like how to soothe this child that feels like mine um (laughs) and then like I did that and I was like oh like I did something yeah (laughs) that like they liked um and so I've like really held on to that as like my my like crowning glory yeah Yeah. that I'm like yeah fuck yeah I, I, it definitely is like hilarious to me how many people are like, "Congrats, Sam, Alyssa, and Matt." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just yeah. realized that our our initials are Sam. Weird. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fun. That is fun. Huh. Yeah, that's Almost like, like it was meant to be. Yeah. Hmm. People are really gonna like come out with the freaking sister wives yeah, comments yeah, after this for sure. Um, but yeah, no, it was really special. And, um, the next few days were like really special. And then I was like, okay, I need to like stop asking to come up there every two seconds to like (laughs) see your child because you guys are trying to be a fucking family. So, um, yeah, but for the first few days, it was basically like I was living my life just like waiting until I could see the baby. Yeah. Everything else was just like biding time. They're on, they're on a fairly good, like schedule most days but yeah now sometimes they're like cluster feeding for like actually five hours which is oh it's just a time you know yeah nipples never the same yeah but such is life yeah so i mean that's how it went down yeah very exciting in the household yeah i do not hear crying ever people were like asking me constantly like can you hear it i'm like no like they can hear my cat <laughs> hopefully that hopefully that keeps up mm, in the new house wood. we'll yeah. see um 
but yeah, that's definitely like, it's hilarious how much they don't tell you about caring for a newborn or like breastfeeding or like anything really. Like they, there's so much that they don't tell you. And then they're like, oh, you didn't know that? Oh, okay. Well, and it's like, th- could not be more complex of a topic. They, everybody tells you about like, don't shake your baby. Which yeah. Which is like, that seems like the most obvious, obvious. of all. But like, yeah, that was the, one of the first things because the, the midwives do like home visits that after. Um, and that was one of the first things they said to us. They were like, so your baby might go through a thing called purple crying and they're just going to be crying for no reason. And even if you change your diaper and you feed them and you do skin to skin and they go for a nap or whatever, like they'll just never stop crying. Um, just if you feel like you're going to like hurt your baby, just put them down, step away. It's going to be fine. Like it was just like that was like the one thing they like really drove home. Yeah. And then we were like, how do we feed them? And they were like, oh, that's don't worry about that (laughs) minor minor don't shake your baby yeah yeah Uh, yeah Yeah. anyways that's it yeah so that's what i'll be up to well no i won't be up to any more labor no in the foreseeable future at least but taking care of child yes yeah Mm -hmm. not shaking and feeding instead yeah yeah that's perfect and i will be here with all of you yeah for approached Woo. all right well um I know. I mean, we had our emotional goodbye on the episode that's going to be the ending episode. But. Yeah. But this is actually Sam's last episode that she's yeah. ever filming with Approachable. It's such a weird, it's like, it feels like school's out for summer, but it's like bittersweet, more bittersweet yeah. than that. Yeah. And school's not really out because school is now, summer school is me breastfeeding. <laughs> It's a different, it's a, it's not the same as school's out for summer at all, yeah. actually. <laughs> the sleepover's over. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of our little approachable family. And now approachable evolves much like a Pokemon into approach. <laughs> and it's going to be great. Yeah. I'm um, excited. And we'll see you next week with a true crime story. Oh, Yeah. <gasps> And it's a good one. Yeah. With Sam. Sam's here. So she'll get to react. Yeah. You can listen to me like interject constantly throughout (laughs) the episode. (laughs) So yeah. All right, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.